I think everyone agrees that a low battery notification sucks. And the fastest way to get rid of that nowadays is of course the super fast charge feature that can fill up my phone in roughly around an hour. This works because the battery gets charged up with 5 amps of current, which is a huge difference to when I normally charge it up wirelessly with only close to 1 amp. And that got me thinking whether it is really worth it to use super fast charging when you're not in a hurry, because I think it stresses the phone's battery way more and thus reduces its capacity and lifetime. But that is of course just a theory and it would be crazy to prove it, because that would require designing a suitable test circuit, do tons of charging cycles and of course measure the most important values along the way. But of course, as you already have guessed, that is exactly what I did in the last three months. And in this video, I will show you how I did it and ultimately present to you how bad fast charging really is for your phone's battery. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB and the Altium Designer software, which is the perfect combination when it comes to firstly designing your custom PCB and then ordering them for real, but more about them later. Let's start off with the game plan, which initially sounded pretty straightforward. We simply take a phone battery and hook it up to a custom circuit, that firstly discharges it with 1 amp down to 3.5 volts. Why 1 amp and 3.5 volts you may ask? Well, while doing some testing with my phone, it seems like 1 amp of current is pretty normal when extensively using it. And 3.5 volts as the discharge limit is also the voltage value your phone says that the battery is empty. Okay, next the circuit notices when that limit got reached and thus switches over to the charge part where the battery gets charged up with either 5 amps or 1 amp up to a voltage of 4.35 volts. Why 4.35 volts instead of the normal 4.2 volts lithium batteries use? Well, apparently phone batteries use a slightly higher voltage, meaning we need to charge up to that voltage to store all the energy. Okay, and last but not least, as soon as the charging is complete, this circuit starts all over again and repeats the cycle for let's say 100 times. So like I said, initially that all didn't sound too complicated. And I even got a strong start, because the discharge circuit was super simple to build since it only consists of 5 components, like shown here. All we have to do to use it is to adjust the op amps trimmer voltage to 1 volt and hook up the battery which I simulate here with my lab bench power supply. And there you go, one amp of current gets discharged into heat, which even stays constant when the battery voltage drops. This works because the op amp will do anything in its power with its outputs to achieve the same voltage on its inputs. And since one input is tied to one volt, the op amp outputs will control the MOSFET in such a way that the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor will be 1 volt as well. And who would have guessed, this happens when 1 amp of current is flowing. Super simple but genius circuits. And of course, by adding an Arduino microcontroller with display to it, we can directly measure the battery voltage and keep track of how many cycles we are into this experiment. And to finish the simple parts, let me tell you that with some off the shelf relays, it was super simple to switch between both required modes. But here begins the difficult parts, because no matter how long you search on the internet, you will not find a readily available 4.35 volts 5 amp lithium ion battery charger. Instead, the best I could find was this MP2639BIC which can do both I was looking for and works with only one battery cell. Perfect. Only problem was that it is usually used for power banks, 
meaning it can act like a power source as well, which I hoped would not be a problem for my application. So just to be on the safe side, I firstly got my hands on a dev board around this IC. And after hooking up a battery as well as 12 volts to its inputs, it seems to charge perfectly fine with close to 5 amps of current. Awesome! And best of all, as soon as the circuit was done charging, it didn't act weirdly as a power bank or similar, because for that you would have to pull a certain pin high. And that meant I got my charging prototype. And for the Arduino to notice that it is done charging, we can simply use the pin for this LED, which is the charge OK pin. It is low while the battery gets charged up and turns higher as soon as the circuit is done. And these two states are perfect indicators for microcontroller. Okay, with that being said, we pretty much got all the basics for my desired circuit. And all that was left for me to do at this point was fire up the Altium designer and create a schematic and PCB design that implements all those ideas. Which honestly was not that easy to do. But the good news was that the dev board of the charging IC came with good documentation, meaning I knew exactly what components to use and what PCB design is recommended. So after maybe a day of trying some things out, I ultimately came up with this final PCB design. And if you want to create schematics and PCBs as well, then you can check out the video description to try out Altium Designer for free which in combination with Altium 365 that allows you to upload and share your projects easily online and Octoparts that allows you to quickly find the right components is a great all-in-one design package. And speaking of sponsors, I next uploaded my PCB design to JLC PCB to get them professionally manufactured. And here I can tell you that they're currently offering free 6 to 8 layer PCBs, if you're using coupons. To get them, simply visit their coupon center, where you can also get other ones for 3D printing, PCB assembly and normal PCBs. And with that being said, I received my boards within a week. And at this point, I was really excited to populate them with firstly all the SMD components, reflow them and afterwards with the THT components. Ultimately, my circuit looked like this and after adjusting its op amp voltage to 1 volt for the 1 amp discharge parts, I was happy to find out that charging worked beautifully and discharging did also work just fine. The only real problem was that the measured voltage fluctuated quite a bit. And the reason for that was that I simply forgot to add some capacitors. But by simply putting two one microfarad ones in series and adding them directly to the analog inputs of the Arduino, this problem got immediately fixed. And after finishing the Arduino code for the project and uploading it, I did one final test round to make sure that everything worked like planned. And once I was sure it did, I now had the pleasure to build this PCB 5 more times. If you're wondering why I did this, then let me tell you that 3 circuits will be for 5A charging and 3 for 1A. And I think with 3 results each, there should be a good chance that we can see a trend in the results. But sadly, this plan only partly worked out. Because after unpacking my ordered phone batteries, wiring them up with a fuse holder and fuse for protection and then fully charging them up so that I can then fully discharge them with one amp while measuring their capacity, I noticed that one was apparently faulty. As you can see, all of them except one were pretty close to 4000 milliamp hours and only battery number 3 could not even hold half of that energy. Thankfully though, I found another use for it in a previous video. But anyway, after I was done testing all my 6 circuits to make sure that they all charged with the correct current, which can be set by a single resistor, it was time to unpack the 12 volt power supplies 
and connect them all to mains voltage, the circuits and batteries. And yes, I know this all looks a bit like a fire hazard, but nothing bad happened in the end. And the only thing I regret was that while building the PCBs, I accidentally used expired solder paste. This caused lots of problems with the solder connections that I constantly had to repair. But in the end, after around 20 days, the first batteries still reached 100 charge cycles. Meaning it was time to one after the other charge them up and discharge them again while measuring their capacity. And after going through all of that trouble, I finally got the results I was interested in. But before showing them to you, let me tell you that 100 charge cycles would nowadays probably equal around 100 days of charging. Which is actually not that much. So I was not sure whether you could see any difference at all. And according to the 1M charging, there really was no difference. Except maybe some measuring inaccuracy. But when it comes to the 5A super fast charging, then there really was a downwards trend visible with capacity drops between 1.2% and 2.3%, which on average equals 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but when we assume a linear increase of this capacity drop, then after 2 years we would lose 11.68% of the battery's capacity, which is quite a bit. And that is of course in the best case scenario. Because I think such a capacity drop gets worse over time. So long story short, according to my results, I would recommend to slowly charge your phone's battery if you have the time to spare. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Which turned out to be a lot more work than I initially planned. But hey, I think it was worth it. If you think so too, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!